This question comes to us from Franck from France. Again, I, I love to see this coming in from all over the world. Uh, this, the way these websites work, now people have access that would never get access to you. He asks a very good question, and this is extremely, extremely important. Uh, it's about camera angles. Now, when I first started playing, I'd never seen my swing. When I first started to take lessons, I just played. And when I first started to take lessons, the first time I saw myself, the guy took some pictures of me, compared me to some other pictures that he had, drew some lines in, said, here's where you're off. Well, sure, my swing didn't look like the ones looked. My swing looked steep. So I learned how to do whatever I had to do to make the pictures look right. Well, about four or five years later, I ran into the person who took the pictures that this person compared me to. And the question was, did you work with so-and-so? Yes. Did he take pictures? Yes. Did he compare you to these pictures? Yes. Where was he standing when he took the pictures? And I said, well, it was here. And he said, well, did your swing look steep? And I said, yes, it did. He said, well, it wasn't steep. The camera angle was off. Uh, <laughs> Okay, I've had some serious aha moments in my career. That was about four and a half or five years of hundreds of thousands of golf balls trying to fix something that wasn't broken because of a camera angle. So let's talk for a minute here about camera angles. Having been in the Nicholas Academies, we brought in some video people. See, you're in a two-dimensional world right now. So two-dimension and three-dimension are different. We see very differently. So you're concerned about, once you set up to the ball and you establish your shaft plane, or if you draw a line shaft plane in, wherever you want to draw it, if you want to see how the club is working relative to that line, or how my body is working relative to that initial line, the camera has to be set up somewhere where it's right on this shaft plane, aiming parallel to the target. Now we got two different cameras here. This is where I shoot video from. So that camera is shooting right through my hands. That camera's hand height, it's shooting right through my hands, parallel to the target line. Now, if I turn these two cameras on and I made a swing, and we played the two swings back and we drew the shaft planes in, you get two different pictures of where the club is relative to the path and what the club's doing through the ball. So if you're really concerned about making sure that you're seeing the right picture of how the club shaft works relative to the initial shaft plane, then you better have the camera shooting somewhere on this, on this shaft plane, whatever the club might be. Now, if the club changes and I go to a driver, I'm obviously gonna have to move the camera because if you don't, six, eight, 10, 12 inches of camera angle can dramatically change what it looks like your club's doing. If you're really concerned about the arc that the club head is swinging on relative to your target line, but you're not too concerned about drawing a shaft plane in, then this camera back here that you're looking through is looking right down the target line. So you're gonna see an unobstructed view of how the club head is working or the path relative to the target line, but you're gonna be skewed relative to drawn in shaft planes. So you gotta be careful about where you put your cameras. I see people all the time out with their, their iPhones and their cameras standing behind, taking a picture and then looking at it. I go, what are you looking at? My swing, what part of your swing? Well, see, I'm a little under, I'm a little over, I'm this, I'm that. So give me your camera. So then I'd move the camera and take a picture and they look at it and they go, oh wow, yeah, see, that's a lot better. I go, no, it's not better. I just move the camera. So be very, very careful, be very consistent and understand what the cameras are telling you because you can get trapped into spending a lot of time fixing something that's not broken.